Hello everyone. Welcome to Sully Surrounds. In this video, I am going to discuss about 5 deadly ECG pattern you should not miss in patient presenting with the syncope. As you know, syncope is defined as an abrupt transient loss of consciousness associated with the loss of postural tone and spontaneous recovery. Syncope is preceded by prodrome of lightheadedness, nausea, sweating and or visual disturbances for several seconds to minutes. Pre-syncope is defined as the occurrence of a prodrome without a subsequent loss of consciousness. So, we seldom miss ischemic and rhythm changes in ECG when a patient presents with a syncope. Here, we are going to see some deadly pattern which can be easily missed and could be life-threatening. So, never to miss following ECG. It can be remembered with a mnemonic A, B, C, D, E. That means, A stands for ARVC, that is Arrhythmogenic Right Ventricular Dysplasia or Cardiomyopathy. B stands for Brugada Syndrome and C stands for Corrected QT, that is seen in Long QT Syndrome and Short QT Syndromes. And D stands for Delta Wave, that is seen in WPW Syndrome. And E stands for Enlarged Left Ventricle, that means it is Hypertrophic Obstructive Cardiomyopathy, that is HOCM. Always remember this ABCDE in your ECG when a patient presents with syncope. So coming to the first ECG that is ARVD or ARVC that means arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia or cardiomyopathy. It is actually fibrofatty replacement of ventricle and that can lead to a delayed activation of right ventricle. And it is the second most common cause of sudden cardiac death in young patients after HOCM. Here in this picture we can see the right ventricular myocardium is replaced with fibro fatty tissues. This is the pathogenesis of ARVC. So the typical ECG findings that is seen in this ARVD patients are one is T inversions in V1 to V3 and epsilon wave and typical ventricular tachycardia with left bundle branch morphology. That is in this ECG we can see the T inversions that is in V1, V2 and V3. In this ECG, there is also an extension into V4 and V5. Here also, the arrow points towards epsilon wave. Actually, what is epsilon wave means? It is a positive wave after the QRS complex. That is, after the QRS complex, there is again a positive wave. That is, indicate a delayed depolarization of the right ventricle. Here, this ECG show ventricular tachycardia. That is, it is a wide complex tachycardia. It is regular and without P wave. So, it is ventricular tachycardia until proven otherwise and this is the morphology is actually LBBB that is in V1 the QRS complex are downwards so that means it is left bundle branch morphology so any VT with the left bundle branch morphology in a young patient present with the syncope always suspect ARVD so we can see in V1 it is downward QRS complex that indicate LBBB morphology so in this ECG we can see uh, this epsilon wave that is the positive this is the positive wave after the QRS complex. So coming to the next ECG pattern that is Brugada syndrome. Earlier it was called as sudden unexplained death syndrome and patients are usually presented with a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and the average age of onset is 40 years and the pathogenesis is actually loss of function mutation in sodium channel and always look lead V1 to V3 for diagnosing Brugada syndrome. So there are three types of Brugada pattern and here we can see in type 1 Brugada there is a J point elevation of more than 2 mm in V1 to V3 with a COVID ST elevation that is followed by a negative T wave. We can clearly see this pattern that is a J point elevation of more than 2 mm and with a COVID ST elevation that is followed by a negative T wave. And in type 2 Brugada we can see the ST segment is actually saddleback shape, that is saddleback ST with a biphasic T wave. Biphasic means initially a positive T that is followed by a negative T. And in type 3, it is actually similar to type 2, but here the ST elevation is usually less than 2 mm. But the, ST, but the standard is ST is actually saddleback, but the ST elevation is actually less than 2 mm. The most important pattern is type 1 pattern. So, don't ever miss this type 1 pattern when a patient presents with the syncope. So here in this ECG, we can see in lead V1 to V3, there is a curved ST segment elevation with a negative T wave. So 
this is a type 1 brocada pattern and what is meant by this brocada pattern versus this brocada syndrome so brocada syndrome means the type 1 brocada pattern with family history or a personal event like ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation or syncope or sudden cardiac death or nocturnal agonal respiration this is called brocada syndrome or the all other thing the, that means this all ecg changes that is called brocada pattern so the important pattern is type 1 pattern that is covid st segment elevation with negativity in v1 to v3 this is very important so coming to the next ecg that is corrected qt corrected qt is very important in syncope because long qt or short qt syndrome can lead to some arrhythmias and this can lead to syncope qt means actually the action potential of cardiac muscle whenever there is prolonged qt or long qt it predisposes to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia polymorphic ventricular tachycardia in the presence of long qt it is called torsadis d pointis whenever there is increase in heart rate it can decrease qt interval so always use corrected qt and measure qt in lead v2 v5 and v6 a simple trick is qt interval is should be less than half of the rr interval if it is more than half of the rr interval it means it is prolonged and always use corrected qt corrected qt can be calculated with many formulas and most commonly used formula is bassett's formula where corrected qt is equal to qt divided by root of rr interval when the qt that is corrected qt if it is 470 or 480 that is in male and female respectively it is called long qt and when it is less than 340 millisecond it is called short qt both long qt and short qt interval predispose to arrhythmias especially ventricular tachycardia and it can lead to syncope so when you get a long qt always look for the cause especially electrolyte abnormalities like hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia and drugs like fluoroquinolones clindamycin and also hypothyroidism here in this ecg we can see the qt interval is more than half of the rr interval so it is a case of long qt syndrome presented with syncope coming to next ecg pattern that is wpw syndrome that is wolf parkinson white syndrome we know normally the atrial depolarization is conducted to ventricular myocardium through av node the only connection between atrium and ventricle is av node but in some persons there can be an accessory pathway that connect atrium to ventricle so in wpw syndrome there is an accessory pathway from atrium to ventricle other than av node so this can lead to symptomatic atrial ventricular reentrant tachycardia so usually uh, the depolarization is uh, conducted to ventricle anteriorly that is from atrium to ventricle and it can result in an early depolarizing wave that is called delta wave because through accessory pathway there is fast conduction because in av node we know there is a delay of 120 to 200 millisecond but through accessory pathway there is fast conduction and it can result in early ventricular depolarization and it can result in delta wave here we can see uh, this delta wave earlier so this early positive wave in qrs complex it is called delta wave and it can increase the qrs duration so it result in widening of the qrs complex especially in the initial part sometimes uh, this can be uh, this conduction can be retrograde or concealed that is not very important for us so the findings of wpw syndromes are one is short pr interval it is because there is no av delay in uh, this accessory pathway so the pr is always less than 120 millisecond the normal pr interval is 120 to 200 millisecond second is delta wave it is the initial positive wave or positive deflection uh, that can be seen uh, it, it is due to uh, this uh, early depolarization of the ventricle and third is uh, this widened qrs complex it is because of the presence of uh, this delta wave sometimes af can occur in wp syndrome patient and it can be lethal because uh in af the rate is controlled by av not normally but whenever uh, there is an accessory pathway which conduct atrial fibrillation it can result in uncontrolled ventricular depolarization and that can result in ventricular fibrillation so af in a patient with wpw syndrome is lethal so always suspect this so here we can see the delta wave in lead v2 
and also in this ECG we can see the delta wave. Look this ECG carefully. We can see it is irregularly irregular and QRS complex are wide and there is varying QRS morphology. So the diagnosis can be on his atrial fibrillation with the left bundle branch block or it can be atrial fibrillation in WPW syndrome. So to, to, to differentiate this, that is to differentiate uh, the AF with LVVV and AF with uh, uh, this, that is WPW syndrome, it is very important because AV model blocking drugs are absolutely contraindicated in patient with WPW syndrome because it can increase accessory pathway conduction by blocking AV node and it result in ventricular fibrillation and sudden cardiac death. The differentiating points are, one is the, the rate, that is in case of WPW syndrome, the rate is usually more than 300. And second thing is the varying QRS morphology, it also indicate WPW syndrome. So these two findings is seen in WPW syndrome, but in AF with LBVB, the rate is usually less than 300 and the QRS morphology are usually similar. So this is very important. Coming to last ECG, but it is the most important ECG and we should not miss these findings in patients with the syncop. So it is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and it is the most common cause of death in young individuals. It is actually an unexplained ventricular hypertrophy that lead to left ventricular outflow tract obstruction and also diastolic dysfunction due to the large mass of left ventricle. The systolic function is good, but the diastolic function is impaired and it can lead to decrease in cardiac output especially associated with the LVOT obstruction. In this picture we can see the hypertrophy is most mostly seen in this uh, interventricular septum. So this can uh, compromise the LV, or, uh, LV outflow. So the most important ECG findings are one is left ventricular hypertrophy in young patients and left atrial enlargement and the most important findings is narrow Q wave, narrow Q wave in lateral leads that is 1 AVL V5 V6 because the Q wave indicate usually an MI but in a young patient especially present with the syncope if you see a narrow Q wave in lateral leads associated with the left ventricular hypertrophy always suspect hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. If you miss this finding the patient can end up in sudden cardiac death. So here we can see this narrow Q wave in one AVL and V5, V6. So the important findings in patient with the HOCMs are one is left ventricular hypertrophy that is large QRS complexes. Then left atrial enlargement we can see uh, that is mm, uh, P wave in V1 and narrow Q in lateral leads. Sometimes we can also see this narrow Q waves in inferior leads but in lateral leads it is common. In 5% of the patient, there can be right ventricular hypertrophy also. So don't miss these findings. So you should not miss this 5 ECG pattern. So always look for this 5 ECG pattern in sync of patients other than ischemic changes and rhythm changes. Sometimes there may not be any changes but if you look carefully we can see epsilon wave, we can see this left ventricular hypertrophy and narrow Q waves etc. So thank you for watching this video.